what is stress testing and is it any use? These are some of the questions I'll be putting to Till Sherman of Oliver Wyman at an event organised by the Systemic Risk Centre at the London School of Economics. Till Sherman, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time for me. The talk that you're giving today is under the theme stress testing and systemic stability. Let's start with stress testing. It's been a long day in Frankfurt and somebody meets you in a bar and says, what is stress testing? I've only got a couple of minutes. Stress testing uh, is the act of uh, essentially passing a bank through a scenario that you and I can understand. So if I say, would you be interested in or what might happen to a bank if unemployment went up a lot? If uh, the economy started to tank, if the, if the housing market started to tank, to be able to have a concrete answer to a question like this, that's what stress testing is about. And in the past, did these stress tests not exist or were they not good enough? Stress testing is hardly a new form of uh, risk management. Risk management has always used stress testing. What, however, is new is this idea of doing it comprehensively for the balance sheet of the bank. In other words, what are the assets? Or might they be worth less? But also the income statement for a bank. What happens to profitability over the coming scenario? In a 2013 article, you said that banks focused more and more on trying to mimic the Fed's results rather than tracing out their own risk profiles. What do you mean by this? And is it fair to say that one downside of having these tests is it's just like in schools? People study to pass the tests, but they don't know anything else. We fall in love with stress testing uh, as a, uh, because of its success as a crisis management tool. So think of it in financial wartime, uh, our back was against the wall, we needed a new tool. Stress testing was the tool of choice and it was very successful. And because of its success, we have now taken it to peacetime. Every year we see uh, the regulators come along and give us a stress test. And the stress scenarios haven't really changed very much. It makes a big deal whether you pass or fail. And so the incentives and the motivations to study really hard to make sure that you pass this exact test without necessarily also worrying about all the other risk management things that you might do for, need to do for a bank are very high. The analogy with a school test falls down a little when we start thinking about the system and systemic risk. And we're at the Systemic Risk Centre and one way of thinking about that might be it's not just whether you as a school passed a test or you as an individual in a school passed a test, it's whether all of your classmates or all of the other schools passed a test. How does stress testing and systemic risk come together? You've really put your, your finger on the heart of the question. How do you use stress testing in peacetime? Because in peacetime, we don't know when the next crisis is on the horizon. So we're very interested in seeing what is bubbling up in the system. And so this idea of not focusing so much just on banks, but thinking very hard about the ecosystem within which they live, the ecosystem within which they operate, how they interact with all the other parts of the financial system, how they interact with the real economy, becomes in some sense the heart and focus of certainly the prudential regulator of the central banks. Stress testing, even on the small part of the financial system called the banks, still is focused on the most important part of the banks because the banks are still the most natural membrane between what happens in the real economy and uh, the financial system. And stress testing the banks is a necessary first step, but can't be the only step in figuring out what the risks are in the system. What are the other things that policymakers should be looking at with stress testing? Well, some of it we learned actually in today's conference and some of the ideas put forward are actually quite exciting about um, uh, incorporating stress testing for other financial intermediaries, like for example, asset managers, like pension funds or insurance companies. These are, uh, as one of the discussants uh, uh, today described, they have the potential for being actually risk shock absorbers. Right? So if we worry hard, much a lot about how the banks might transmit the shocks, uh, then we will have to worry about, well, where will the shocks be absorbed so that as a system as a whole, it doesn't blow up. And uh, uh, thinking hard about um, where else to probe, how, taking a scenario, again, the beauty of the stress testing uh, is it has scenarios that are very tangible. They're easy to understand. They're easy to talk about. And to uh, 
ask um, financial uh, intermediaries, firms, uh, companies, financial companies, not just banks, to conduct these stress tests, would give the financial sector overseer, if you will, um, insights into how all the pieces are linked together. Is there a problem that the regulators are a little bit like generals trying to win the previous war, trying to come up with stress tests to, that would have prevented the last crisis, but that won't prevent the next one? Almost by definition, the next crisis will not be one that we've stress tested against. Because after all, if that scenario occurs, we will have already been prepared for it. We've just stress tested against it. There's a temptation to say, what's the point? It seems all terribly futile. I think that would be severely misguided. The very act of going through this stress testing, let's start just inside a bank, promotes tremendous interaction between parts of the bank that hitherto had had very little interaction. So one of the things that I've observed is it's remarkable to see how more, much more cohesive the control infrastructure inside a bank uh, works. So it keeps them on their toes, if you like. It keeps them very much on their toes. But it also generates useful um, insights about, for instance, how uh, about strategic insights for the bank. So again, for example, the strategic planners in a bank, they are the optimists, if you will. They are there to think about how can we grow this institution. They are there, very importantly, to think about the next set of risks to take on. Banks are there not to not take on risks. They are there to take on risks and help companies uh, grow. So the question then becomes, will these strategic plans actually survive a stress scenario? Even if this particular scenario will not uh, manifest, the very fact of that they are doing this, that the optimists and the risk takers inside the bank are confronted concretely with the possibility of things going wrong, instills a kind of discipline that I think is critical to making the system safer. So what are the key takeaways that people who care about stress testing should bear in mind? Stress testing is an invitation to be uh, creative. It's an invitation to think the almost unthinkable about what could possibly happen uh, in the world. What could happen to housing? What could happen to unemployment? What could happen to another uh, economy? What could happen to another sector and how would it affect either my bank or my neighbor's bank. Recognizing that we can have this conversation uh, and talk about concrete scenarios and use that as a way to understand how will my bank do? How will it fare through this storm? How, how, how will the, uh, the, the boat emerge from the storm? And use that as a way of getting either more or less comfortable with how the bank is doing. That, I think, is sort of the core of stress testing for me. It's the process of doing it rather than the answer necessarily that you get out. Till Schumann, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.